Now, it seems to me that people often focus on power generation and power use. So when you're looking at power generation, I guess you're looking at things like engines, water wheels, wind turbines, whatever. And then you're looking at how it's used. So again, motors, heating, lighting, that sort of thing. And we seem to focus on those two things without thinking much about how it gets from one point to another. And when we generate power, we generate it in one form that may not be useful in the form we want to use it. And so we have to change it. That system of getting it from point A to point B and changing it into a usable form is the job of the transmission system. And it's super important because uh, power generation is not much use if you can't get it from one place to the other and you can't change it in the way that you need to use it. And that's the job of the transmission system and I find it fascinating because it's super important and I think often gets overlooked and it's one of the reasons we've been looking at these things because of course the transmission is joining it up with cables, rods, lines, wires, whatever. Then changing it is usually the job of things like the gearbox and that includes the clutch, that sort of thing, so that we can use that power in a form that we wanted. Now clutches really separate two rods and gearboxes really are step changers. What would be really great is if we could move smoothly through a whole load of gear ratios to match exactly at the time we need it what it is we need. And that's why there's so much interest in CVTs, continuously variable transmissions. And of course, we've made a few of them. And we've made a few of them sort of this kind of design where we have this selector moving from zero smoothly through to whatever the top gear ratio is by moving manually the selector. Now there's loads of ways in which that's actually useful because you could argue that things like power transmission and CVTs and gearboxes really came to the foreground when it came to the development of cars. And so it can be very useful to be able to do that. But there are plenty of situations where you would just want it to be automatic. You just want it to do it. So this is what I drew up to do that job. So let's get it printed out and put together and we'll see how it actually works. The first bits are these bits. There should be two of those. There should be four of those. You're going to need a couple of springs. These springs I just got from a spring box that I bought and they just fit on the rod. There should be that rod there and that rod there and the spring goes on there rather neatly and again I just picked out of the spring box. This slides onto there and the spring goes on and then this end cap fits on on that side, this fits on that side and the whole lot fits into those two pegs right there and you just glue it together and then there's another one identical but instead of this it uses this sphere. When you've done that, this is what you get. This rod here is free to move up and down on the central rod against that spring. And then we have another one exactly the same, only it has a ball with an indent in it. Later, that rod will fit into that indent. But for now, what we do is take this one and slide it into the base unit right there. Slides in there, and there's an indent there to take a clip to hold it in place. This one goes through the end plate exactly the same. But you'll have two rods like that and two lever arms and the lever arms are going to go onto the rod about two fifths of the way down from that end and two fifths from the way from that end. Once you've glued those into place you slide them onto the body. And then it's like that using those clips here and here to hold the whole thing in place. Now these lever arms are fed through that central rod there and that central rod is then glued to the indent on the ball on this side. Now it is important that these here are in the same position so that the springs are on the same side. When that's done there are two ratchets that go on here and you just slot those into position. Then we add the actual ratchet output gears which go on there and there. And again, there are two more clips put here to hold it in place. And finally, the actual output gear, which goes there, and it has a large clip to hold it in place there. And that's it put together. Now, this isn't my idea. I got this from this patent, and there's a research paper on it, which is open access right here. And I'll put that link 
in the description should anybody want to follow it through, because this thing works at a minimum of two of these followers. It works better with four, obviously, but the minimum is two, because halfway through the cycle, of course, it's a ratchet, it reverses, and we want the other half of the cycle to pick up that slack. The output is a bit jerky unless you use something like a spring clutch, but the way it works is when this tries to turn faster, this bit, which is free to rotate, is able to be thrown out by centrifugal force against those springs. Of course, when that happens depends on what that weighs and the strength of those springs. So, at a given speed, it'll start to force itself out. As it forces itself out, then the arc that these move changes. And so it becomes a change in transmission dependent on the speed. Equally, if there's a limit on here on the load, then that load will actually act as a brake, preventing that being pushed further out. And so this little mechanism is an automatic way of getting that change in gear ratio. And I thought it was really quite neat because I will put these files on the Thingiverse should anybody want to play around with them. But remember, this is just a proof of concept version. It's not an actual working version. And playing around with the number of these gears and the positions of these things would make a big difference. But I certainly thought it was interesting. Certainly thought it was worth drawing your attention to that using centrifugal force on these weights, a bit like a steam governor, is a really great way of getting an automatic transmission to actually work, depending on the load or depending on the input speed. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.